Hi guys! Thank you for being here. In this video I'm going to show you a few things you can use to make any of the projects I shared with you in the previous video and what we may or may not use in the upcoming project. I just remember to use your imagination and don't lock yourself into thinking you have to stay within some guideline that keeps you from thinking outside the box. I hope you enjoy this project that will be coming up soon and thank you all so much for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being so supportive. I appreciate all of you. So let's get started. Hey guys, this is part two of the video where I shared with you the dolls and bunnies and, um, not flowers, birds that I made. And I pulled out a bunch of things to show you that you can use, that I did use. You don't use everything I'm going to show you on every single one you make, although you can, but it's just an idea of what you can use on the ones that you are going to make. I may or may not use what I show you. I just pulled out a bunch of stuff, and as soon as I show you everything, I'm going to turn off the video, put it all back away, until I get to the point where I'm ready to decorate, because then I'll know by then what kind of decorations I want. I don't even know what color I'm going to use yet, or what I'm going to make yet. I think, thinking I might make an elephant. I'm not sure. I'm kind of thinking that'll be kind of cute. So, the first thing I want to share with you is the paper I use to sketch out or draw out my pattern. I use a very cheap kids drawing pad that I had on hand. I got it at a grocery store. If you have Publix near you, this is that's where I got it from Publix. It's just called Draw. It's heavyweight drawing paper. Sometimes you can tell by the sound if it's a heavier paper or not. This is not super light, but it's not as heavy as cardstock paper or thick scrapbook paper. But that's what I use to sketch out or draw out my pattern. So after I sketch out my pattern, then I uh, drew out my pattern onto chipboard. The chipboard I used is, I think, sold at Joann's. I haven't bought it in a long time because I've had several packages of this for a while. So this is called Silhouette Chipboard. And it's a very flimsy chipboard. It's not heavy, heavy. There are some chipboards that you cannot bend. They're so thick. This is a very lightweight chipboard and that's why I like it. It's easy to work with. So that is the package, what it looks like. I doubt that it looks that way now, but that's what I'm using, or that's what I did use. But for today, I'm probably gonna use boxes. And let me show you that. I have a couple of boxes I saved. This is a just a cookie box, Velveeta, they're called breakfast cookies, but we use them with our coffee sometimes in the afternoon, and they're pretty good, coconut, toasted coconut flavor, in case you're interested. <laughs> but I'm gonna use possibly this, and it's almost the same as the chipboard I just showed you, very light. This is from Bailey's Hepatic Support, which is what she takes, and it's light, and it's about the size that I might need, I'm not sure. This is a vitamin box. It's made by the same company, the company that we buy our Hepatic support for Bailey makes vitamins. So we have vitamins that we bought the other day that came in the mail, and this is one of the boxes. So that's a box I could use. The other box I'm probably thinking about using is just a cereal box. Cheerios. My husband likes Cheerios at night. Sometimes I'll eat them. I like them, but I just don't eat cereal that often. But it's a good weight. So you can use chipboard. You can use cardboard, it's a little heavier, you can use boxes, you can use any kind of heavy paper, it's up to you, whatever you decide. Okay, so that's what I drew my pattern onto to cut my shapes. And then after I got my shapes, I used paper to cover my shapes. Now, I'm going to show you a couple things. You can use any kind of scrapbook paper. Okay, this was one that I had sitting around. It's, it's been here a long time. I've had it forever and ever and ever. And I may use something out of it. I mean, you think when you buy something that you're gonna make something and use it all up. Well, that's not how it works. You buy something, you make a couple things, and then you have paper for the rest of your entire life. This will last forever. But you can use any kind of scrap paper, any thickness, doesn't matter. And then what I mainly use, hang on, let me put this over here. I've decided I need a bigger table, a longer table, so I can hold everything I want to show you. Here we go. First box. Okay. This box here has scrap paper in it. And this is 
where I got most of everything that I created that I showed you in the first video from. This is where I got all my papers from. And you probably won't recognize them because once they're cut up, you don't really see most of the paper, but there's a lot of paper in here that's been used for this. And I may pull from here to use for my little whatever I'm gonna make. I may use some things from here and some from the other paper stack. But I just wanted you to know, just wanted to show you that it's easy just to use your scraps. Even if you don't have a piece big enough, you can piece it together on one sheet of paper. Like take one of those pieces of drawing paper that I just showed you in the beginning in the green pad, lay your papers out, glue them down, and make one piece and then cut out your shape. You can do that. You don't have to have the right size. But I'll go through here and I'll try to find sizes that are big enough and I'll try to cut what I need. So we'll see when we get to that point what I choose. What I'm going to do is after I've shown you everything, I told you I was going to turn off the video, put everything away. I'm going to gather up what I want to use and how and, and get smaller amounts of things to show you. But this is just to get started. The other thing you can use is deli papers or papers that you put all your extra paint on as you're painting if you paint. This is full of, this is a sticker sheet. This is full of deli papers that have paints on them. I love this. I probably will never use this. I'm, I may keep working on it and make something out of it, but I love that. Anyway, there's all kinds of papers in here. This is just paint put on cardstock. That's a print that I pulled. This is labels, a bunch of different labels put down on deli paper that I'm going to make something out of. It's almond milk labels and food labels, things like that. And just junk paper. You can use anything like that. I also keep in here extra... Here's the paper I, I told you about on the bird that I used for the wings and the tail that is made out of the, the napkins that were used in making Easter eggs one year. I just glued all the napkins onto deli paper and then when I needed my wings, I cut out from there. So this is a shaving cream technique we used and after we did that, we needed napkins to, to clean our hands and this is the napkins we used to clean our hands and wipe up the table. I uh, also keep starter iCads in here or index cards, things that I haven't done anything with, things I threw extra paint on that I need to do something with. And you can use that for your uh, pattern pieces. There's a bunch of those in here. You can use anything. This is a tag where I threw extra stuff that was scraps just laying on my table. I don't know what we'll use yet, but that's another option. Oh, and this is napkins just glued to music paper that you can use. And this is glued to book paper. You cut all that out, you're not going to see this. It looks like a hot mess right now, but you cut all that out and it looks really pretty. Don't be surprised. The other thing you can use is uh, die cuts. And I did use die cuts on one of mine. I don't have the little box of die cuts that I used, but in this box here is odd and end things that could possibly be used. Let me pull these apart. Pull these aside. Those are something I want to tell you about. But like that one I told you about where I stamped an image on some paper and used it as the body. This is what I was talking about. I had a piece of paper like this with some of those stamped images. I'm not going to go get out the doll and show you. You can refer to the first video if you want to know. But that's what I was talking about if you saw the first video. Packaging. This has the little dots on it from where the flowers were stuck. But you turn it over and it's got a lighter version. So I use that on some. This is a... One of those boxes, I what they called, I forget what you call them, but you close it up, put a lid on it. I've already used the lid on something, but you take the lid off and it, and it cascades open. Well, I didn't like how it was turning out, so I stopped working on it. And But I kept the papers, because you can use the papers for something. Little printouts of butterflies and things like that. Stickers, anything that you want to use on your doll, you can use. There's some doilies in here. I've got coffee containers. This would have been cute for some of the ones that said coffee, but I knew that you wouldn't see enough of this to know that it was really a coffee bag, so I just saved it for something else. So, and then one of them I used tags. I told you that I had bought sheets and sheets of tags a long, long, long time ago, back in the scrapbook days, which I never did scrapbook. I bought tags. They were from Paper Loft, and they were they're called Tags Get Real, and it's pictures of flowers, and you can see the two tags I pulled out to use. 
and all kinds of pretty images on tags. So if I wanted to use this as a tag, I just punch out the hole. It's already got a perforated hole that I can use, but I just left the hole filled and used it for my doll body. And these are ones I was playing with and was thinking about using. So anything can be used. You don't have to be locked into just paper. Just use your imagination. You can use coffee filters. Anything you want to use is great. Okay, then once you get your body covered and your dress or coffee cup or teacup or bird seed cup or whatever kind of cup you're making covered, you are going to assemble it. And the way I assemble mine, well first, let me tell you, by putting on the papers on the cardstock and everything, I just used glue stick. And occasionally, a lot of times, not occasionally, quite a few times actually, I used double-sided tape. This is score tape and I use these together because even time I use score tape I usually use glue too. I don't know why, it's just me. I did start off using my scrappy tape. I think it's a little bit less expensive than score tape so if you want to look online for scrappy tape or score tape those are the two I use. Scrappy tape has 30 yards and score tape has 27 yards and I think this one's a little less expensive. So I use those and anytime I want to glue something on that I want to make sure that it stays and I don't want to have any trouble with it, I will use a wet glue. And the wet glues I use for these projects is the Aileen's Original Tacky Glue and I use the Helmar Quick Dry Adhesive, the 450. I'm almost out of this, so I've been looking for it and they don't have it anywhere around here. So I got a replacement glue that I've never used before that I'm going to try, not in this video probably, but it's the Clear Gel Tacky Glue by Aileen's. So we'll see if I like it, but I'm probably going to order some Helmars online because I really like this. Okay, so that's adhering. So then to put your body parts together, I used my Crocodile. This is the one that I have. I have the Big Bite that you can use, but, you, but it's big and these aren't big pieces so you really don't need the big bite. The crocodile fits just fine. But I will show you also the eyelets that I used. They came with the crocodile in a little bag so I've been using those. These are a larger size. I don't know what size but I use these and I also have some smaller ones that are different colors and I use those in some of them. So if you don't have one of these you can use a regular punch that's fine if you can reach your, your spot. If you can't, get a pokey tool or something that's sharp, like an awl. I've got an awl over there somewhere, but I won't go get it. Something that has a sharp point, and you want to mark your place, and then you want to gently bore your hole, and then keep making it a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger until you get it the size that your eyelet will fit in. And if you have an eyelet setter and not a crocodile, that's fine whatever you choose but you don't even have to use eyelets you could leave your holes without eyelets because you really can't see them not really well and if you put ribbons in it and all it, it covers it so just improvise one of the things that I love to say because it's been the story of my life improvise adapt and overcome so if you don't have a crocodile improvise adapt and overcome okay and then after you've got your pieces assembled then I usually use this hug snug to put a bow on the edge of my coffee cup where the little handle is. You don't have to have this. You can use any kind of ribbon. It doesn't matter, but I just wanted to let you know in advance. I, I usually use this. I got it online. It's just seam binding. It's 100 yards of seam binding. I use it all the time. You can dye this if you want to, different colors. And so I got white, but I use this for everything. So you'll probably see this come out. And one other thing I was going to tell you about is when you cut out, if you use a coffee cup, I don't know if we're going to make a coffee cup, but if you do make a coffee cup, you're going to need a self-healing mat and a X-Acto knife to cut out your little hole. If there's anything that we do that's real intricate, we'll need this to cut it out. I don't like using this. It slows me down. I just prefer to cut my stuff out with scissors, but occasionally I do need to use this. So that might be something you see. It might not. I don't know. I just wanted to let you know because it is something I did use before. I also have these clips that I got from Harbor Freight that I love and I use all the time to hold things together. If I'm gluing like lace and cardboard and stuff together and it's not laying real flat because it's still bulky and you want the glue to dry, I just stick these on and let it sit for a little while. 
So that's an option. You may or may not want to use clips, but if you don't have those, you can use just regular, I think they're called bullnose clips or clothespins, anything you have, doesn't matter. Then you wanna, oh, and the scissors I use were just regular scissors. They're all gluey. These are my cheap gluey scissors and my Tim Holtz scissors that cut through anything, I use those. And I also went around all of my edges with Distress Ink, which is a vintage photo. I have these little spongy things. And I, you don't have to have these. You can use a regular makeup sponge. You can use any other kind of applicator you want. You can even use the edge of the pad if you want to, although you can't get in the cracks with that. A Q-tip, you could use a Q-tip if you wanted to. But I use Vintage Photo to go around everything. And I also use a little bit of the fired brick for the cheeks if I want to make some cheeks. And the stays on is for if I want to create something that has a word or image or stamp or something. I have some stamps and some stays on that's in Timber Brown. And that's what that's for. And if you see that. Then you're going to want to have your decorations. I have just a few things out here. A bunch of bows and flowers. Just any kind of flowers. I'm trying to use up these flowers. I'm sick of having them. I've had these forever. I don't even like these anymore. But if you take them out of the packaging and you use them on something, they're cute. So there's flowers here, paper flowers. You can even cut your own if you've got a punch or a die cut machine. You can punch your own. Some of the things I put on, like on the coffee cup, I raised up a little bit. And so I use pop dots. And so that's what these are, little pop dots. I may or may not use those, I don't know. These are some stickers that I have that I've been using. Some little cutouts with sayings on it that I might use, I might not. Laces, trims, ribbons, colors to match whatever you're creating. Here's some more ribbons. Then I might or might not use something like this, you know, like I have a little container, I have several containers of things like buttons and um, jewelry pieces and things like that. And these are little clothespins and little buttons here and clips. And these are the little paper clips I told you about that I created the hair on the bird. Let me see, let me pull out another one. And I put on the top of the head for the hair for his little tuft. That's what those are. They're just little clips. And this is a little music note. So you can use anything. These have diff different holidays on them, which is cute. These are silver little birds. So anything you have, here's some keys. I need to take those out and put them in here. And let's see, what other thing? I've got a container here of the eyelets, and I am gonna pull out and show you the eyelets I used that were small. I wasn't going to, but since I had it right here, these are the little eyelets, eyelets that I use for some of the small ones that have little colors. And these are little brads that I use. Could be something like that that I might use. I also have little flowers like these that you could use if you have stuff like this. So anything you have that you think will work for you, that you like, just go for it. Use it. Okay, I think I've covered everything that I used, and let's get on with the actual making. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to set up for creating the pattern piece. I am going to fast forward some of it, because if I made it long version, we'd be here forever. And honestly, I'm not a drawer. I'm not a sketcher. So any pattern I create is always very rough, and I like it that way, so that's fine with me. If you are picky about it, then you're gonna to wanna to take your time and make sure you make it perfect. You can use a reference photo if you need one. I did not use a reference photo for these, um, except the coffee cup. These are what the pattern pieces look like. Let me show you the little bunny with the ears that are poking up straight. That's that one. And her little cup and arm and dress are here. And then the little girl, arm and cup and dress. See how rough they are? But who cares? Once it's cut out, nobody knows. Nobody cares. Well, if they care, that's too bad. I don't care because I'm just having fun and I'm just creating something that I like. 
This is the bird. This is how simple is this? Looks like a snowman. I could make a snowman out of this. And here's this little beak. Put it that way. And then his little wing. And then this is his tail. So you see how simple that is and how cute it turned out. You saw in the first video, I would assume, I don't know, maybe you didn't. Go back to the first video if you didn't see. And then his coffee cup, or the girl coffee cup. And this is the big bunny coffee cup with the square handle, kind of weird handle. Here's little hearts that I stamped out that I used for the love coffee, love tea, whatever I want to put on the doll. Here's the little girl that's the bigger girl. And her arms and legs are here. This is the inner ear for the bigger bunny. Here's the bigger bunny. I just made his ears different. They all have a similar shape. And that's the centerpiece of the ear. And then for the face, I just cut out a, a face shape that's similar to the shape on my piece and glued on. I don't have a pattern piece for that. This is the inspiration for the whole thing that I created because I saw this and said, it looks like a skirt. I think I'll make some dolls. That's how that got started. And here's a smaller version and here's holes if I want to put legs in. I kind of want the feet and legs positioned. This is one that I screwed up on and I glued both sides of the paper on before I actually inserted the body. You can overcome that because there's several that I forgot to do that to by just attaching them to the back and covering it with lace and flowers and things like that or the front, doesn't matter. But I at the time I was doing this, really wanted her stuck inside, so I started over. But normally you would glue the front and then turn her over and put your body in, then glue this back piece on. So I think that is it. So I'm going to get started and I will talk to you guys as much as possible, explain things and show you what I'm doing and what I'm using. And if it's something monotonous like tracing or cutting out or whatever, I'll probably speed up, okay? One more thing I wanna tell you about before I put this stuff away is if you look at this package of paper clip keys that I got, once I take the paper clips off, look at this cute packaging. This is very pretty. We can use this. You could use this for anything you wanted to use it for. You can make a tag or you could use it for your body parts. You could make it the coffee cup. We might use this for the coffee cup because it looks coffee cupish, doesn't it? Okay, now let's get started.